Okay, here is an incomplete review of Unit D. So um, let's start out with this question right here. You have a force that has these three unit vectors, or th that's listed in unit vectors, it's in three dimensions, and then a displacement that's also in unit vectors, and they want you to find the force, or excuse me, the work done. So go ahead and pause and try and find the work done. Okay, um, hopefully you did this. You multiplied the two i's together, so that gives you the work done is going to be the two i's multiplied together, so that's two newton meters. You lose the i direction plus the um, the two j's multiplied together, so that's twelve newton meters. Plus the two k's multiplied together, so that's going to be um, plus four newton meters. So that's going to give me um, 2, 14, 18, 18 newton meters. All right, next question. If you have a force versus x graph like this, and um, I asked you to find the work done from going from 0 to 4 meters, Go ahead and try and find the work done by this force going from 0 to 4 meters. Go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. So the work done is the area underneath this curve. So the area underneath this part is 1 half base times height. So that would be um, 8 joules. No, it wouldn't. It would be 4 joules. And the work going in this part is 2 times 4. So that's 8 joules. So the total work done is... 12 joules. Okay, my second question here is going to be um, if the mass is 6 kilograms, what will be, and it started from rest, let's say that it start, V initial is 0, then what will be its speed at the end of the 4 meters? Go ahead and pause and find the speed at the end of 4 meters. Okay, well, um, it turns out, it, uh, I, I probably should have mentioned that this is the net force. If that's the net force, then the work done by the net force is the change in kinetic energy. Hey, that's only if it is the net force. This is only if it's the net work done. So I got 12 joules of work. And um, so that's going to equal 1 half, K, 1 half mv squared, mv final squared. Minus one half mv initial squared, but that's zero because I told you that it started at rest. So if I put a six in for m, that'll be um, the half will make it a three kilograms, and I bring that over there, it's going to be four. So v final will be two meters per second. Okay, the next one. Do a little energy conservation problem. You compress this spring one meter. This um, the K value for the spring is 400 newtons per meter. It's a two kilogram crate, and it's going to shoot this up the hill. Um, the hill's five meters tall, and I would like to know what the speed of this box will be at the top of the hill. Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, so this is how you do this. E equals E prime. So the energies that have at the bottom, let's call this our UG equals zero line. So the energies it has at the bottom, it just has one half kx squared. However, at the top, it, it's got um, two energies. It's got um, some height, so it's got a little mgh, but it's also got a little velocity, so one half mv squared. All right, let's go ahead and fill in the numbers. So I have um, 1 half times 400 newtons per meter times 1 meter. And I'll square the 1 meter. And then um, this mgh will be um, 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. times 5 meters plus 1 half the mass is 2 kilograms 2 kilograms 
times v squared. So doing the math, this is 200 joules is equal to, um, this turns out to be um, 100 joules. And the one half and the two are going to cancel out, so that's just going to uh, that's going to give me minus the kinetic or plus the kinetic energy. So it turns out that the kinetic energy must equal um, 100 joules. And so V has to be 10 meters per second. Okay, so we this is a, a much easier problem doing it with E equals E prime than any other way that you might think of. Okay, let's add a complication. All right, so now we have um, a spring. Uh, same, same setup except for this time. This is 5 meters again. The height of the hill is 5 meters. But this time I'm going to tell you that um, it gets up here with 8 meters per second of speed because there's now some friction on the hill. If there's friction on the hill, then you see how it's less speed than it had it the, the last time? And I want to know how much work was done by friction. So let's use the the um, generalized work energy theorem that says that the the potential energy it has at the beginning plus the kinetic energy it has at the beginning plus the work done by the non-conservative force that will equal um, u prime plus k prime. Okay, well um, at the beginning the only type of potential energy we have is one half k x squared, so that would be one half k times x squared. So this is going to be two hundred joules at the beginning. There is no kinetic energy. Plus the work done by the non-conservative force, which is what I'm after. That will equal at the end. Um, we have a hundred joules of potential energy because um, m m times g 10 times h 5 meters that's 100 joules plus um, how much kinetic energy we have 1 half m so that's going to be 1 half times 2 is 1 and then times v squared that's going to be 64 joules okay well that now I know that the work done by friction Friction took some of the energy, mechanical energy, away from this system. How much mechanical energy was taken away from this system? It looks like 36 joules. 36 joules of energy was taken away from the system. So this is negative 36. Yeah, 200 joules plus negative 36 gives me um, 164 joules. All right. Well, I think that's all we can handle. I think I'm not going to be able to get the next one done, so I'm going to have to go to part two. I'll see you at part two.